Okay, all right. Here we are. Doing it raw. No intro music. No intro music still. Considering how this is the podcast that is emulating talk sports radio, which has a theme song, a different theme song every time they come back from a commercial. I'd say we're definitely, you know, setting ourselves apart by not having a theme song at this point. Man, you know what my favorite thing about sports radio is? What's is, that? Is all the the sound bites that AM 574. Oh, th- okay. The, the, that so, turns into like a three minute thing. Yeah, man. I love that shit. And I was, cause I was coming up with things. Cause I was thinking about, oh, I'm going to do it earlier before we do this. And I just fucking didn't have time. But when we do, when I do it, that, I think that's how it's going to start. It's going to be like, Hey, this is K K F U C K K fuck. And it's one Oh one point nine. Here come Adam and Josh in the morning on sports radio, 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 like, you know. radio. You're, <laughs> home. You're home for butt fuckery sports. Yeah. And then just like, and, and then tur- just turn just it into some nonsense, weird, yeah. like nonsense, nonstop. Yeah, I think that's what (laughs) the fucking it's dollar dog night here at 101.11 K-Pock, like, you know, or some shit. That would be fucking great. Damn, you know, what would be really sweet is if we can turn this podcast into an actual sports radio show. (laughs) Well, I mean, uh, shit. At some point, I would love to have people call in for their favorite sports. Like if we have, let's say the Angels play one game or play a game. And uh, we just have like an open well, session where people would really, call in. Really, we would just have to have like a suicide hotline if it's <laughs> fans calling in. I mean, it's just, you know. Yeah. Uh, have, have callers in, man. It'd be nice to have like regulars and shit to just oh, yeah, talk man. about our favorite teams and stuff. Uh, what, what other stuff I was going to say? Oh, okay. So for like for Petrus and Money or even Rogan and Rodney on uh, AM570. They go out to restaurants and oh, they yeah. do they do a live radio show at those restaurants and they'll fuck with people or talk to them right. in the audience. Man, I would love to get to that degree. It doesn't even have to be anything crazy, dude. I would love local businesses just oh, yeah. to have us. Like just we go to Lampost Pizza yeah. and post up and fucking sit in the corner and have them hook us up to the sound system and then we just record a podcast and just have people come up and say or shit. We just interview people. Fuck, we could do yeah. trivia because they have that trivia game there. About, yeah. We do a sports trivia. F- oh, man, that'd be fucking sweet as shit. Yeah, but well, anyways, before I, th- this is episode number two, chirping from the pine. Yeah, I'm Josh. He's Adam. Howdy. And yeah, we like to talk about sports. So so we made a podcast about it because fuck it. Why not? Yeah. And uh, anyways, go ahead. And also, I mean, shit, like like we said, we're not pros or anything. You got to give us a shot. Uh. <laughs> We're we're working on it. We don't know how this show is actually going to unfold, if or if we're going to be proficient at uh, proficient at gathering stats. You know, making sense of the narratives for all the teams yeah. that we love. I, I don't want to say this is going to be a strictly baseball related uh, podcast, but it should be sports. I mean, it's centric. Sports, yeah, sports centric, probably with more of a focus on baseball than anything else. I mean. We're probably going to talk about something baseball related every fucking episode just because that's I mean, that's the sport that we're both for sure in on following and do quite a bit. You get deeper with the stats more so than I do. But um, I, 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 at I don't least know, know about that. But yeah, yeah, I think that you you do look at stats more than I, I don't think I really give two shits about stats. Yeah. But um, it's fun to argue and talk about. So. You know, just like uh, the other day when we were talking about the batting averages, uh, you know, 300 being. Oh, man, the, it's the, the bottom line, the for, bottom barrel of the of being considered for, for the Hall of Fame for proficient at hitting. <clears throat> yeah. And, or just being. Yeah. Just being proficient at hitting and to, to, Ichiro Suzuki, Tony Gwynn. OK, those are guys. Yeah, but they're exceptional, exceptional. That's why that's why I said for the Hall of Fame, bare minimum 300 lifetime batting average. If you have a 299, I'm sorry, man, you're not eligible. I don't know. That's just uh, that's nitpicking over. It's not nitpicking. It's setting a standard and sticking with it. Okay. It's a standard of excellence. I don't know. I think, I think that could be mitigated by, because even if you say 290 is the number for batting average where you're like, mm, don't know about that. I don't know. That's Hall of Fame. But what do you say about like the ribbies and the home runs? Like if you're, let's say you're number 10 on the home run list, you hit 290 and you have, you know, a, you have 3,000 hits. You have 3,000 hits. You have, X amount of ribbies, but your number 
Well, your batting average is that means you batted over 10,000 times and didn't reach base enough if you have three ounces <laughs> of hit. So hit tough him. shit. You <laughs> fucked up. All right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> fucking A, dude. I will, I will fucking ride that. You know what? That's the first shirt this podcast is going to have. All right. <laughs> How about this? All right. I think so at one point, we're going to have to look at the database for I think oh, dude, ba- that- ba- 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 baseball reference itself yeah. to say what the actual batting average is. The average batting average for everyone in the Hall of Fame. Everybody in the Hall of Fame. That'll tell us what the real number would be. Yeah, what it should be. What it should be. What should be. And, you know, what should be the minimum is is the average. Because then, see, if you if you have a minimum, then it will never go below that minimum again. If yeah. you say, okay, if we looked at it right now and it was 288, mm. then you, we said, all right, the standard now is anyone with a batting average below 288 cannot be elected to the Hall of Fame. That would mean that the batting average of the Hall of Fame would never go below 288. It would always either be higher or the same. Realistically, it'd probably just make it, it would just increase it, it would make it higher. Yeah. I wonder who the lowest batting average is in the Hall of Fame. That, I'd be interested to know that too. We should do a whole fucking episode on just looking into like, like looking into the weird, base, like yeah weird. weird Hall of Fame stats and fuck we could do it with any sport. It didn't have to just be baseball, but yeah, that'd be fucking cool. And you know, I would like to see also just based on maybe by by decade by decade the average salary of the people who made it in the Hall of Fame when they were in those decades. Like let's say you their career was you know most guys do what twenty years. 15 years. I don't know. I don't know. Shit. That'd be another stat we could look up. What's the average amount of years played for the people that made it into the hall of fame? Well, shit, man, if you're lucky enough to have a 20 year career and you're, you're good enough. Yeah. Then maybe that contributes to your hall of fame. Cause if you are, you're stick around for like 10 years, actually, I don't know because Sandy Koufax only played for like, I think a decade plus or something. Well, but that was not that because of world war two. I don't know. I feel like that had something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> like he, like those six years he was at fighting the Germans or the Japanese in one theater or the other. Well, I mean, well, I'm just the point being that he had a short career. True, but he got what? I mean, I, I could look up his uh, information real quickly because I, I forgot. Mm, I think he's a two-time World Series winner. Man, his ERA, good. his ERA was probably fuck all because nobody could hit against him. That's true. Uh, his his er was an era was negative three <laughs> <laughs> that'd be fucking awesome uh, let me see real quick i i since we're i mean i didn't really want to turn this into a going on our phones no shit. i know yeah. but i mean you know fuck we, we, we gotta look shit up to make sure that we're doing it right you know yeah. especially when it comes to stats because there is a definitive right and wrong when it comes to stats you're either right or you're wrong and I at least want to disseminate correct information, mm. even if it turns out initially that we were wrong and we correct ourselves by looking it up. I would much rather put out facts okay. than instead of bullshit. OK, he had a 12 year career. OK, made the all stars in the latter half of his career. OK, so from 1955 to 1960. Uh, shit, that's so crazy. So his numbers when he initially started ERA 3.0 uh, or roughly 1956, nearly five. Yeah. 1957, 3.88. 1958, 4.448. 1959, four, roughly. 1960, 3.9. Damn. And then the latter half of his career, he was fucking lit. 1961, all-star. All-star numbers. He put up uh, a 2.5 ERA, 1960, or sorry, 1961, 3.52, 1962, 2.54, 1963, he was lit, 1.88. Damn. 162 games, dude, and he put up a 1. fucking, a 1.88 ERA. That's crazy, man. That's fucking. That is insane. Those are, those are insane numbers right there. Yeah, 1964, 1.7. 1965 two nearly 1966 1.73 so he had two he had three seasons where he was under two as far as his era goes. yeah that's fucking great and and see this is why i like looking shit up because one of the things that we always know Ooh. is well go ahead so can, can i still talk about the accolades oh hell yeah yeah let's hear them okay 
three Cy Youngs. Uh-huh. I'm guessing it was the years that he had like a fucking under two ERA. Four World Series. Four World Series. Two World Series MVPs. Five ERA titles. Three triple cr- triple crowns in, in pitching. So that, that Jesus includes- Christ. So that's most strikeouts. ERA. ERA high, or lowest ERA. And what's what was the other one back what's, then? What's the what's the third ca- category for pitching? Well, back then I don't know if it's the same as it is now. Triple Crown, pitching. seven time All Star, two time uh, Player of the Year. Okay, it's leading a league in win. Okay, it's wins, so wins, it's wins okay. strikeouts, and ERA. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, fuck so, man. But that's weird because you think your best years are usually when you're younger, but this guy yeah. put it together in his second half of his career. And just put up fucking and, godly numbers. And you know what's interesting if you think about that too is it could be because if all he knew how to do was just throw gas the first fucking it, it wasn't enough. Just throwing hard didn't do it for you. It had to be you developing your pitches over the year, developing a curveball that worked, developing a a fucking knuckleball maybe or a slider or some off speed pitch that yeah. could really change the game for you. I wonder what pitches Sandy Koufax actually threw. What were his, what was his like rotation that he would? I'm sure he had a fastball. I think of his, course. I think everyone. his curveball was like a twelve to six. Curveball. Oh man, those are so beautiful when they when those twelve sixes hit, man. Yeah, it's like a, it's like oh. it rolls off the fucking table. Yeah, dude. and and you can't hit it. It's yeah. impossible to hit. Like yeah. it, it fucks with your depth perception. Oh yeah, because you see it. Yeah. one way, and you're like it. The twelve to six curveball is the baseball equivalent of breaking someone's ankles in fucking basketball. Yeah, it with, is with the fucking with the, you, you, with the move. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. You literally, you when you swing at that, you're you're, ah, you're just, you break every bone in your body. Like yeah. that's it. You're dead. But yeah. man, so yeah. See, this is exactly why I like looking up and making sure that we know that the numbers are factual and that they're accurate. Yeah, the numbers don't lie. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. That was a uh, Scott Steiner. If uh, <laughs> see so, some of these assholes don't tell you what the reference. Yeah, is. that's true. Because I, I we'll let you know. Yeah, there's a few ones that I lo- really like from Petro. Some money. Hell, there's one from Jay Moore when he was part of uh, AM five seventy when he took over Jim Rohn. There was some guy that said, "Hey man," like, "Oh yeah, hey, man," <laughs> and that that was the soundbite. But I never found out. Who- Maybe maybe this guy that we're going to interview, maybe he could tell me what that fucking oh, sound man, bite. that'd be cool. Yeah, assuming that we yeah, yeah. follow through. But we'll have to ask him. Yeah, so anytime we use a sound bite, we'll tell you where it's yeah, from. Yeah, we'll tell you where it's from because, uh, yeah, there's some radio shows don't fucking yeah, they don't, tell you. They, they don't just do that. They just assume that you, you know. Yeah, you, you have know, enough knowledge. Yeah. Um, all right, so just real quick, back to the Hall of Fame thing, right? And I think that this is a fair assessment. Okay, so the average... Oh, you figured it out. You, you oh, I, looked, I Googled it just, just while we were here. The average, the average batting, batting average, average. Of every single person in the Hall of Fame is 303. Oh, shit. Really? The average ERA for eight, all 88 pitchers in the, in the MLB. Hold on. I, I, let, me, Fame, let, let me guess. It. What do you think it is? I think it's like two, 2.5. No, it's much higher than well, not Three? much higher. 3.01. 3.01? Yeah, is the average oh, year. Shit, man. So, I would say that the rule of threes applies to the fucking Hall of Fame. If your batting average has to be over 300 mm-hmm. or your ERA has to be under three, otherwise disqualified. I don't know about that. <laughs> I feel like you could make it up, okay, for like hitting, right? Like yeah. I said, if you get 3,000 hits and you're hitting 290 and you get, and you're... I don't know what what is the number for three thousand, Mister, being Mister three thousand. There can't be that many people that have had three thousand hits in their entire career. If you're one of thirty people that have made that list, okay, it's thirty three. There's thirty three guys in there. Thirty three so guys in that have collected three thousand or more hits in their entire careers. Yeah, so it's thirty three guys. That's it. All right, and let's say your number, let's say your number uh, fifteen on the on the home run list. And your batting average is like, let's say, 280. You, you still don't think somebody like that gets in? Because you're one of 33 people that have gotten on the list. Okay, so for something like that. Yeah. <coughs> that is an elite stat. Because if you, I feel like the hallmark of making Fuck the man. Hall of Fame uh-huh. is that you're, you're, you exceed at one of those fucking categories. Or maybe so if you were the, like, if you're, if you are in the top 10, one of those categories and batting average aside, like you, you made it on the list for 3000 hits or for a pitcher. If you made it 
Uh, uh, if you made a fucking triple crown at least once in your career, dude, that that means you were the shit for at least one year, I think. I mean, not to say maybe the whole career. Well, yeah, is, but see, is, the thing is, is, is we're not looking for, at yeah. we're not looking at one year. We're, to be Hall of Fame worthy, mm. we're looking at a career. Yeah, consistency. Through, personally, yeah. I think consistency is better than okay, like minus the steroids. Mm-hmm. Okay, you got McGuire. You got Sosa, you got Barry Bonds, right? Uh, I just want to see curio- curi- curios- what the fuck's the word I'm looking for? I curiosity? Don't know. No, out of, yeah, out of curiosity, what is Mark McGuire's career? Batting average? Yeah, average batting, like career. All right, I got somebody that we could talk about for as far as uh, pitching. Fuck, it was so bad. It was like 250, It huh? was 263. But see, and that's the thing. Okay, so that is the thing. He was the first person in fucking 70 years or whatever it was to to break that fucking record of most home runs in a season. A season. So for for the National League? No, that was for baseball. That was the MLB record was it was 60 was it 62 or 61 or something like that, whatever okay. it was before McGuire and then he broke it. By getting, I don't know, 60 something. I don't remember what the number was. But then it didn't matter because then just 10 years later or less, Barry Bonds broke it with 70s in the 70s. So I think that, sure, breaking some sort of a record that has been, and again, theoretically, McGuire only had that that one good season, right? I mean, that was, and, and this is the other thing about that specifically. You talk about steroids? Well, no, not steroids, but that time, in baseball, that was the uh, that was the draw. People watched baseball for to see nukes. if Mark McGuire. Yeah, for the for the nukes, that was it. The was, dingers, the ding, the fucking the yards, t- the, the taters. That's what that's what people watched baseball for. And God, I mean, he only had sixteen hundred hits, man. That's it. And basically, a third of them were home runs, though. So that's. That's so he, he, either, he, he either was hitting dingers or he'd strike or he's out. striking out. And that was it. And I think guys that do that, that either hit dingers or strike out. Those guys probably don't need to be in the Hall of Fame unless they did something like this, where they broke a record that it had been standing for 60 plus years mm-hmm. or whatever the fucking number was. Yeah. So. That's that in and of itself is, yes, that that act alone was Hall. Of, that, that gets you in. Well, not him because he steroids, but. If he was a non-steroid player, and really, I guess we can just say that the the record hasn't actually been broken by anyone who didn't use steroids. Because I don't, because Ken Griffey Jr. was the only other guy that was close, that was natural. And let me just see most MLB home runs in a season. Because he's on the top 10 for sure, I mean. Okay, yeah, so 73. God damn, he only did it a couple years later, man. In 2001 was when Barry Bonds broke that fucking... That was crazy, because it, it, was, it, was, it, was it was an arms race between Sammy Sosa, Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire. Yeah. And then Barry Bonds came into the fold. And, I mean, shit, imagine if people actually pitched to him. Because there was a time when, like, a lot of pitchers were just... Oh, yeah. They were just, <laughs> I think Greg Maddox made a joke. He's like, how do you pitch to Barry Bonds? You walk him like, <laughs> <laughs> you throw him four balls. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, Okay, so shit, man. It's not even fucking. Okay, so on this list of home runs, like most home runs in a single season, mm-hmm. post 1900. Okay, this goes all the way back. Modern baseball. Okay, you got Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, and Sammy Sosa are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven of or six. There's six of the top ten. Okay. The next guy closest is Aaron Judge. And he got 62 exactly in 2022. He tied the he tied well. He tied uh no, because the record from uh, Roger Maris was 61. So he technically beat the record. Okay. But I don't know if Aaron Judge was on ever did steroids or not. I don't know if that's been he's proven. also six foot. Yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a monster. Yeah. So, but that that does if he didn't do steroids then great. He would be the one. Before him, you got John Carlos Stanton in 2017, mm-hmm. he hit 59. I don't know who the fuck Ryan Howard is, but he did it 58 in 2006. That was, uh, ex ex first baseman for the Phillies. 
Okay, so back he, in the back in the early 2000s. Yeah, so he did 58 in 2006. That was his best. I don't think he had a season like that afterwards because I yeah he fell off real quick. Yeah, he won a World Series, but that was that's like the hallmark. I mean, shit, man. A Rod, Alex Rodriguez got fucking 57 in 2002. And Ken Griffey Jr. never actually got there. He got 56 in both 97 and 98, man. So he did it two years in a row, though. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's that's out of the top 20 or whatever. But so the last guy who potentially would hold the record who has not been convicted of steroid use or admitted to it would be Aaron Judge mm-hmm. at six. So then the record would re- the real record would be 62. If you didn't use steroids, but it took somebody like that with that build to make it. Oh yeah. It took yeah. a, it took a beast. And I mean, he did play four more games than Barry Bonds did in that season. And he played two more games than McGuire did when he did it. Mm-hmm. Um, he did get more bats than both of them though. Cause uh, he had 570 chances, you know, at bats. And then Bonds had 476 and McGuire had 509. So technically he had more opportunity to hit it. Now, if you look at, uh, I mean, Roger Maris, he played 161 fucking games that season. So he basically, shit, I don't know if they were playing 162 back in 1961, but fuck, that's kind of weird. He set that record in 1961 by playing 161 games, and the home run record was 61. Like, that's crazy. Like, to think that. But yeah, I mean, he had, oh, he had 590 at bats. So maybe that's the key. Maybe the key to breaking the record is you need to fucking have the most at bats possible. In so a that means season. you probably want to bat at the front of the. Yeah, you bat. probably do. You want to hit like cleanup or. You want to be in the top of the order. Fuck man, the leaders in at bats in the MLB the record Jimmy Rollins 2007 he had 716. At he was bats. lead off. Yeah, he was lead off for the Phillies with Ryan Howard. His batting average 296. <laughs> Not good enough. Not, Not Hall good of enough. Fame. I don't know, man. Getting that 700 fucking at bats. Let's see. Ichiro. Three, oh, man. here you go. Perfect. Number two, Willie Wilson in 1980. 705 at bats, 326 batting average. My good buddy, Ichiro Suzuki in 2004. 704, fucking 372. What a beast. What a monster, bro. And that's not even holding that dude. He can't even hold a candle to what? Uh, fucking, what's his name? Uh, Mr. Mr. Fucking Red Sox, the Ted Williams, dude. He had like 400. Oh, yeah. He had like 430 or something like that, didn't he? All right. Ted Williams, uh, the record batting average in 19. Well, it's not the record, but fuck, man. These are all from back in the day. So the the highest batting average in a single season was 426. <laughs> and that was set in 1901. That means you're like batting. Every time you're up, you're basically like every you're what, getting a hit like, like half every the time. Yeah, like basically the half the time. time. And I mean, he played in 131 games, so it wasn't like they played fucking no games back then. He had 544 at bats and he got 232 hits, man. I wonder. And goddamn, you know how many times he struck out? Fucking basically none. Zero. Oh, shit. 24 walks. 24 walks, man. But he only hit 14 home runs. So. All right. Do you think possibly because the game was still developing itself that not not the repertoire of pitches yeah, weren't it that, wasn't probably that great? Yeah. And like maybe was, people have two pitches. Yeah. A fastball it. and maybe a change up. Yeah. I think is probably what you're the, the craziest you're getting back then. Yeah. Or maybe uh, putting your fingers on the seams on the fastball a little bit differently than than everybody else. Two yeah. seam to four seam, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um. But by that same token, hitting was also, I mean, the batters were probably also not that great either. I mean, it, it kind of goes, it ebbs and flows, I think. Yeah, but I mean, um, the fact, well, I guess, I guess the the fact that we still talk about him, he has a book dedicated to hitting and it's oh, yeah. still relevant, probably speaks to why it's, he's still great. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, fucking a man uh so okay so the guy of the modern of our modern era essentially basically i'm talking about 80s on there's two guys fuck man there's Th- that the hit what the- okay in the top 50 batting averages of all time there are two guys that are post 1950 all right i think may- i i i'm i have an idea of maybe one of them or oh, i'm sorry there's three guys. I just found the third one, but okay. 
As far as batting average? Yeah, it's, it's record batting average. The top 50 batting average, career batting averages. Is one of them Barry Bonds? Or single season batting averages. No, he's not on there. He's not even on this top 50 list. Is Miguel Cabrera on it? He's not on here either. Fuck. So the closest to us in terms of time frame is Tony Gwynn. Tony, fuck, how did I not think of He's that? He's number 19, uh-huh. and in 1994, mm. he hit 394. That was the highest batting average for like for our for the season. Like this is a season like this is this is like the highest batting averages in one season. So his highest batting average in a season was 394. The next the next Ichiro's not even on here. Fucking a dude. Ichiro is consistent though. Yeah. The next guy that's on here, Rod Carew. Or no, I'm sorry, George Brett, 1980, 390. Rod Carew, 1977, 388. I have no idea who this fuck is. Those, those names. You never are. heard of them? Oh, I've heard, I've heard of both of them. George who, Brett who, played on, he was, I think he was a second baseman, and he played on, I believe it was the Kansas City Royals. Uh huh. And then Rod Carew, I think he played on the Phillies also, like in that 70s, like that weird fucking era. Yeah. And I think he was a third baseman. Mm-hmm. Another thing I wanted to talk about on this pod, not this specific podcast, maybe, but like, just the funny baseball stories I've heard of like guys and weird shit that they would do over the years. I think that's like a topic we should do one of these days, but just develop, like come up with like, find a bunch of them and then find weird shit. Yeah. Weird stories of like interactions or encounters that people had or some weird shit that guys did putting, putting a suppository in your ass. Yeah. During the playoffs. Like like, I mean, the, the prime example that comes to my mind is Wade Boggs drink, like day drinking multiple beers on planes everywhere he went. Like he would just drink on every plane he was on and he would just bring like a 20 pack and he would just fucking just, but that was back in the day when you could do that. You can't do that now, but yeah. you know, but yeah. So anyways, um, Oh man. Okay. So I think there are weird stories like that. There was a, there's some, I, I can't remember what specific baseball stadium, but there's something about chili dogs. Oh man. So one person, I, I think it was like Frank Thomas could eat 20 chili dogs. Fuck man. Frank Tom. Uh, Frank Thomas is a big dude too, man. He's, he's a, uh... yeah. So there was something about Frank Thomas and chili dogs. So then so, <clears throat> some, like whenever people go to like Chicago or some bullshit, uh, wait, Frank Thomas played for the Chicago white Sox. Yeah. He right? played for the white Sox. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it was something like chili dogs. And every time, like there's, there's like one person on some other team mm-hmm. that wants to try out to see if they can eat like 20 chili dogs. But then it turned into whole a whole team to see how many people can eat. Oh, like, the whole team yeah. can eat how many chili dogs, chili dogs. In, yeah. in one thing or some shit. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'll have to look that up. I'm gonna have to double check on that. Hey, you know what? Frank Thomas career batting average. 320. 301. 301. Frank Thomas. Just Hall out. of Fame. Hall of Fame. Out. Worthy. He's out. You no, said it was 303. You said it was 303, right? No, I'm saying that we just set it at 300. And we set the ERA at well, you three. Said, you said the average was what? Three yeah. Three? Uh, well, well, obviously it'd be whatever year. So like that, that year included the most recent class. Okay. So if you started now, then 303 would be it. But that's why I was saying, oh, let's be fair. And let's just make it 300 mm-hmm. and an even three on the ERA for pitchers. Okay. All right. All right. So I don't know when this guy is going to be a fur on, on the ballot for, for uh, the hall of fame, but somebody I really enjoyed. Mm hmm who went off the rails towards the end of his career because he, he had such a weird fucking delivery. Tim Lincecum from the San Francisco giants, like during the 2010s had uh, like a three year strength, three years, three year stint where he put up unreal numbers, I believe. And he ended up winning like the world series <laughs> three times, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Nickname the freak, the freak. Yeah, dude. I mean, I, it's hard to say, Oh, yeah, I remember this guy. He came to the Angels for one year and then never actually played. Yeah, uh, and then never really recovered either from... I think he... I think he ended up fucking up his arm because he just... His whole... His whole mechanics were just unorthodox as fuck. Did he play? I think he did play, actually. I think he had a... I think he he played, like... Because he was, what, it was like a two-year deal, or was it... I'm going to look it up. Tim, wait, maybe this is the wrong guy. Tim, Lin, wait, what's his name? Linscom. Lin, Linscom. Lins, Linscom. Okay, no, this is the right guy. Oh shit, he only played nine years. Yeah, he didn't play that long, man. He's only, dude, he's only thirty nine, man. He's like our age or a little, a little older. Ten years. He played ten years. So yeah, towards the end of his career, he played with the Los Angeles Angels. Yeah. 
put up a nine fucking ERA. Jesus fucking Christ. But from 2008 to 2011, he threw four complete games. I mean, listen, throwing a, throwing a complete game is no fucking slouch maneuver. That is a feat in and of itself, mm. especially in Major League Baseball. Yeah. So. Yeah, he threw complete four complete games in one season. Uh, 2008, he had an 18 and five record. Hmm. But his whole thing is for me is that he won the world series three times. His ERA, would you say the average ERA was for the hall of fame? 301, 301. His is three, seven, four, but he had, I mean, he was lights out in the playoffs. So it's like, yeah, what, what do you, what do you got? So, okay. That's the other thing though. So then does winning a ring really, does that, does that give you any fucking extra? Cause I mean, look at his fucking career strikeout. I mean, his, his, okay, let's sure his win loss record. He was above, he was above fucking 500 for above sure. It, yeah. I mean, he was one ten and 89. So, I mean, that's what, like six something probably. Mm. Um, I mean, he had 1700 strikeouts. What's the, uh, what's the average number of, oh, I should look that up. The average number of strike. Fuck. I guess this is turning into that whole thing. Episode, yeah, whatever. Is. What is the average number of strikeouts? 1500 seems like all a- of fame pitchers. Let's see. Okay, so the average Hall of Fame pitcher has 237 wins, 2043 strikeouts, a 66 war, and a 301 ERA. So by that definition, he is not even close. He's not even close, but he just had a few good seasons. A couple good seasons doesn't make you it's the Hall of Fame. It's the elite of the elite. He but it, <coughs> I mean for 4 years for four years that from 2008 to 2011, well, I'm, I forgot what years they won the World Series. Let's see. Um, come on now. Okay, it was somewhere between like the from 2010 to 2014 that they won those World Series, right? Yeah, okay. Through. Approximately. So e- even even that, like, but so then, okay. Well, what was his? Co- okay, so then I guess you'd have to really get deep down. And you'd have to look at what his contribution was. You know what? Okay, not to, not to go on a tangent, but every like the, this year's Hall of Fame class, we should sit down and analyze their whole fucking career and determine if we like if we would vote. Like if we had a vote, mm. if, if we would vote yay or nay, and well, then we do the twenty twenty five one because that that one had Ichiro in it, and then it had CC Sabathia. And oh yeah, let's do that one. Did they vote on that one yet? No, that one's I think next year. They vote after the season, right? Like, or do they do it? I think twenty twenty five is the the. So have they voted? They've they, already voted on this on 2024. I think so. Yeah. And did did they already now? They didn't announce yet, though, right? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know what? Maybe we should do 2024, and then we should do another episode for 2025. We should okay. fucking do them both. Fuck it. That'd be fucking great. All right. Uh, but anyways, but yeah. So then you'd have to really sit down, and you'd have to analyze their whole fucking career, and then you'd have to look at like with this guy. Okay, what did he do in that those playoffs? Let's look and see. Did he actually contribute? to the world series victory. Mm -hmm. And if he did, was he a main contributor? Mm -hmm. Then maybe I would say there might be some argument to be made that maybe that guy could be in the hall of fame. Yeah. But because he, he literally fucking did not meet the mat, the the averages of these fools that are in there. I would say no dice, no dice, but damn, you need a three time world series champions. Nothing to, you know, you had your part, but okay, so but let, then me, let me ask you this. But, but then you say two thirds of your career is dog shit. Let me ask you this. Yeah, there is a prime example of someone on the Dodgers who has that exact same fucking thing. Mm. Do you think that guy deserves to be in the Hall you, of Fame? You talking about Kershaw? No, I'm not even. I'm not even talking about him. You talking about I'm talking about Joe Kelly? Oh, Joe Kelly. He's got three rings. He has three rings. I think he does. I believe I think, he does. I think he only has two. No, I think he has three. He won one in 2020. He won one with the Red Sox. Didn't he win two with the Red Sox? Oh, I thought he only won. I, I, th- won I think two. he only won one. All right, well, let me look it up now. Now, I, right. got, now I got a fucking. I, he's it. only two time World Series champion. Okay, so are you saying that three rings is the fucking, <laughs> is, the, <laughs> is the standard now? Okay, yeah. now you want to put minimums on shit? Let's see, Joe Kelly. Uh, two time World Series. Okay, all right. So I was wrong. I thought he had three. Four ERA. Okay. Right. So let me ask you this yeah. then. If he wins a third one, which Damn, likely he that, will. You know, okay, that that trips me out. That trips me out because 
Joe Kelly being a relief pitcher more or less has the same numbers as Tim Lincecum, and Tim Lincecum is a starter. He had a three, like, career-wise, oh, yeah. yeah. career he had a 3.75. So, so does that, is that good or be, is that better or I, worse? I don't know. It just makes me think. It's like, well, at least this, as a starting pitcher, Tim Lincecum well, you have put more, up better numbers. Well, yeah. Well, I would also say that you have more opportunity for failure as a starting pitcher because you're likely going to throw at least four to six innings a game. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much, I think, the average you're throwing between four and maybe five. I, I'd say six is maybe a stretch, but let's just say call it four to six innings. Yeah. Where if you're relieving, I mean, if you're a middle reliever, you might throw two, two innings. Three, yeah. You know, you could be two two innings here, an inning there. So you have a lot less opportunity for failure. Mm-hmm. So your numbers should theoretically be better, I would imagine, or I would yeah, hope. Like, I mean, imagine it, it, probably maybe two. Because the another thing, too, because if you come in and you inherit, if you come in with got runners on second and third yeah. and a count on the batter, you if you if those runs score, they do not count towards your ERA. So theoretically it wouldn't even matter if you if you you couldn't even use the excuse of oh i came in halfway through the innings most of the times and uh, well not nah, the they're runners that you belong that belong to you right that's the yeah. only way you get credited with them yeah. so and that i mean that does also kind of suck too because if you were the starter and let's say you, the coach pulled you after you had a guy on first and then the next dickhead comes in and gives up a two-run home run well you just inherit you just got both of those yeah you, you didn't uh you, you didn't get you didn't to finish up, your yeah finish your plate you didn't give up the runs yeah but it's they still you. get tracked to you and yeah. you get you get statted on them. So that does kind of suck. Yeah, but being a two time World <clears throat> Series champion, man, that that is that is the pinnacle of like seizing opportunity, just being on the right right circumstances. Hell uh, yeah, man. Hey, you know how many World Series rings I got? Fucking zero. Fucking zero. I got a goose egg. I have as many as Bryce Harper. I have. <laughs> I don't remember Frank Thomas. Man, won a World you know Series. what, dude? Me and Mike Trout, we both have the same number of World Series rings. Yeah, Hot man, damn. we're just as good as Mike Trout, man. You know, that's a that's a very good point. Yeah. But <laughs> so aside from uh, devolving into just looking up baseball reference stats. Uh, what, what do you, what do you got to, oh shit, man, I'll, I'll, I'll start yeah, you off. started off. Go ahead. All right. So, I mean, shit, exciting week of baseball. I mean, Saturday, I'm looking forward to Shota Imanaga from the Cubs pitching. Cause, uh, apparently he hasn't even started just yet in spring training. So, oh, hold on. We got to get out the, Yo! All right, this is this is the Nippon the Nippon <laughs> Sports Report brought to uh, you, brought to you by uh, what's that Japanese beer fucking uh, Sapporo or, <laughs> or Kirinichiban? Yeah, Kir- p- probably in the future brought to you by Kirinichiban. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what we should do? We should make up fucking pro- oh, cool, yeah, that's how we do it. All right, we make up products and do fake sponsorships because this yeah. is supposed to be you know that's all the sports shows have sponsors up their ass. Yeah, so we could fucking make up a. <laughs> Brought to you by Mushroom Cloud Beer from Nagasaki, Japan. Yeah. <coughs> uh, we we are not endorsed. Endorsed. <laughs> uh, no, we're not, not endorsed by, by uh, Sapporo yeah, or no. Kirinichi Band. That's why we got to make up our own. So yeah. then that way we don't we don't get you know we don't give people the wrong idea. Yeah. Uh, exciting week, man. Uh, it's been a, it's been one long time coming to go from winter meetings to spring training. I mean, shit, man. I've been stoked for baseball. I've been keeping track of that shit, making sure Yoshinobu is eating his fucking Wheaties and, you know, putting on his underwear right. Is he doing his proper stretching and exercise routines uh, that are unorthodox? Yeah, that was like one of my favorite things in spring training, or I think something that was mentioned uh, in passing that <laughs> some interview interviewer, or rather a journalist asked that when he came here, he's like, oh man, it's fucking great. Like I get to do whatever the fuck I want as far as like, my training regimen goes because as far as like Japan goes, they, they go hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. They spend, I mean, what, what was the amount of time you would spend fucking practicing <clears throat> on a baseball team? Sure. Oh, aside, shit, from, aside from what you would do on your own, but yeah, just talk like, about like on the team, with the team. Yeah. I mean, shit, you're going, I mean, we would do maybe, I mean, you're doing every day basically, but whatever, maybe it's an, a couple hours a day. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not like nine to five, you know, you're not doing like eight, 10 hours. All right. For them over there, they do. I mean, they were like, I, I think at a younger age, they do four hours of fucking a day, a day. Fuck, man. That's so. Hard. 
And it's shit. Even when, and when it's off season though, you're not even fucking doing shit every day. Yeah. You're showing up and you're just sitting there maybe jerking off. Like you, yeah, you put your shit on and then you just throw, you just play catch for fucking 45 minutes and then you guys fuck off and go home. Yeah. And then, yeah, when you're ramping up for the season to start, like maybe, I don't know, we would usually start, you know, like the normal time, like spring training would be, you know, starting in like the middle of February. So about that time, you're just basically doing weightlifting and condi- like, you know, weightlifting and conditioning. So, yeah, we're spending maybe that closer to that two hours a day, maybe three hours a day, five days a week, some Saturdays you're coming in, you're doing shit. But then also on those days, you're pumping out, you know, fuck, dude, the goddamn conditioning. Oh, fuck. Strength. I think this is the worst, man. Like just I, I don't have a problem with weightlifting. I love that. That was the best part. Just lifting weights is fun. But man, the conditioning is just it's fucking sass. Are you talking about like running? Yeah, it's just I hate running, man. It's the worst, especially when you're a baseball player, because especially like me, because I was like a catcher or a third baseman. So like in on de- on defense, I'm not really going anywhere. Like <laughs> all my shit is just quick bursts of movement. So I don't really need to be able to run a couple miles at a time. Right. It's like a, it's like a dwarves and fucking yeah. Lord of the rings. It's like, oh, we're, we're, we're made for sprinting. Right. Exa- yes. That's exactly <laughs> the, the attitude that I had. And as a baseball player, unless you're an outfielder, you're basically just, you don't need any endurance. Like mm. you just need to be able to, if like for me, I just needed to be able to make it to second base. That's the farthest I would have to run in one continuous go. So like, cool. I would just train to run as fast as I fucking can until I, until I hit the distance of a hundred and what, what was it? What is it? 90 or 60 feet between or no 90 feet between bases. So I had to run 180 feet. That's it. With one left turn thrown in, man. And then they fucking want you to be like, oh, yeah, guys, just keep running until you can't run anymore. Well, uh, fuck, man, I hit 180. I'm done. Like, what do I what do you got? What do you got for me, man? Oh, no, you got to keep going. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's the worst. But anyway, sorry. Yeah, well, Free training. Awesome. All, all that to say that I don't know if this was a dig at Americans. But I think he was kind of calling us soft, like as far as training goes. Uh, yeah. Or maybe maybe not. Maybe an indirect way to say that we're soft. Like, oh, man, we trade way harder in fucking Japan. But, uh, yeah, this week. What if that's going to be to his detriment? To his detriment? Yeah, you know how some people. Overexert themselves? No. Like, you know how how some people, they need that. They need that rigid discipline. Otherwise, they just go off the rails. Like, what if he just is like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't need to run wind sprints today. Oh, cool, man. I'm not going to do that. And then you just kind of. Oh yeah, I'll let it sit. I'll let it sit. Oh man, I'm at McDonald's today. Oh, I'm gonna eat this. Gonna eat and obviously, we have very poor food choices here. It's not like in Japan where they have very clean, you know, eating eating habits just in general. But oh, he comes here and he wants to get a Big Mac. Oh man, Big Macs are fucking delicious, especially when they're made in fucking America because the Big Macs in Japan they don't hit the same. All right. Oh man, and then he just maybe gets an addiction to Big Macs or fucking Arby sauce or fuck, fuck who knows. Uh, Arby I mean, sauce. Hey man, that horsey sauce is the shit. All right, but it's uh, bad for you. I've never. I can't. I I barely remember. <laughs> I barely remember eating Arby's in my entire life. Dude. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. The big oh man, the big Montana. No, oh, dude, it's, it's literally a giant beef fucking stack. It's it's six beef and cheddars in one. Is it really? I didn't know that. I don't know if that's the number, but it feels like it's it's a shit ton, man. That was like a that's a regular item on the menu. It was. I don't know if it still is, but back in the in the nineties and the early two thousands, that was every time we'd go to Arby's, I'd be like, yeah, let me get that big Montana, and then they made another one later on that was called the bigger Montana, and it was like two big Montanas. So that's like twelve beef and cheddars right there. Good fucking lord, dude. Yeah, that's it was amazing. Wild. It was delicious too, man. Oh, all that cheddar. It's so bad for you because it's not even real cheese. It's like that liquid, liquid fucking yeah. liquid yellow orange shit. It's cheese product. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's fucking delicious though. Yeah. So yeah, so what do you think? Do you think that that is, there's a possibility that that could be something that maybe kind of puts him at a disadvantage? No, nah, not really. You don't think so? <laughs> nah, but it is funny to think about. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, no, you're wrong, but it is funny. Yeah. Yes. All right, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so uh we both we had both the debut of uh Shohei Otani and my favorite thing about all this was I was like, "You know what, man? We need to start putting ourselves out there." Or I was thinking after this experience, we probably put ourselves out there more often as far mm-hmm. as social media goes. Yeah. Cuz uh I follow a few I follow a few of the Dodgers fan pages for uh for Instagram because they they seem to put out things quicker than the actual main pages. Ugh. So like if there's a highlight, they'll usually have it before oh, that's Dodgers or whatever. 
even though it's technically illegal because they're, they're redistributing. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the copyrighted material. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, so I'm ready. The first, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday they had, it was, I think it was Tuesday, but Shohei's first batting experience, at, batting his experiences as yeah. being a Dodger as DH. Uh, and how'd that go? Okay. Well, the first at bat was him. I think he took like two. He, he fouled off like two pitches and then struck out looking. So I was like, oh, my God. So I go on one of these fan pages yeah, yeah. and I say, oh, wow, uh, that was an expensive $70 million strikeout. <laughs> and I, I just meant that more as fu- like a fun yeah, just thing. Just to be funny. Because we've had, I, you know, as a Dodger fan, you've seen those mega contracts like uh I remember one of them was like five years for Andrew Jones when he was basically dog shit on on the Atlanta Braves. Like, yeah. I mean, he was a great hitter, but he was our center fielder for like five years. And they ended up, I don't know how many years his contract was, but that was like, a, that was a shitty contract. And he maybe played average at best, right? Yeah. So I was alluding to that, like, oh, no, here comes trouble again. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're spending 10 million for this fucking guy. Or no, not 10 million. 700 million for 10 years for this guy to strike out. You know, it's like his first step back. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't yeah. really. So anyways, Shit. everybody started coming after me. It's like, oh, so you, his future is decided by one fucking at bat. And I don't know, man, it, it turned into a whole thing. And I'm like, I love this. This is great, dude, because it really speaks to how I love baseball, but I'm I'm OK with laughing at when the Dodgers suck and they had like they sucked for a yeah, I think like for 30 years from like the 90s up until Frank McCourt left, it was like they're they're all right. It's yeah. subpar. And now it's only now that they've they're basically like the Yankees. Yeah. At this point. But I, I take the I like taking the humor in that. But other people seem to take offense to making those kind of jokes like, oh, no, I'm a diehard Dodgers fan and. I'm going to I'm going to fucking kill you <laughs> like I mean because it has happened like I mean that guy Brian Stowe that was a Giants oh, yeah. fan that got, got murdered stamped. yeah fuck well man. I mean he got he got left paralyzed <clears throat> and he got his ass jumped yeah like that's how far people take those things and that that's not the case for me I made a joke and everybody jumped yeah. after me dude that so I guess to, to even piggyback on that man I was at this party the other day uh-huh. and it was a kid's party but there was a guy that walked in and he had an Angels hat and everybody's like, oh, man, you, you get that hat off. And, you, and I said, wait, what do you mean? What's wrong with that hat? It's a perfectly acceptable hat to wear. That's actually the hat of the party. That's the theme of the party. And then the this one, I said, wait a minute, because they weren't wearing any regalia or anything. So I said, wait a minute here. Are you are you fools Dodger fans? And then they went, yeah, absolutely. We're Dodger fans. And so I was just being an asshole. And, you know, as I am. And I was I just went like, oh, you're Dodger fans, huh? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, bleh, bleh. like I was like throwing up a mouth a little bit. And I was like, uh, uh. and they're like, what are you doing that for? I was like, oh, it's just so disgusting to see Dodger fans. That shade of blue just makes me uh, uh, just thinking about it. I just uh, uh, like I just kept going on. And on. I was I was kind of harassing them a little bit. But listen, they started it. And also they're marks because it's easy to fucking get them to, you know, get a reaction out of them because they are. They're fucking Dodger marks, and they're easy to get a reaction out of. Me, listen, sure, I love the Angels, right? But I don't love them that much. I don't really care. It's it's like, eh, sure, yes, our team's garbage. Yeah, sure, make fun of it. I know you guys have been garbage for fucking 40 years, and hey, finally, you're good. Awesome. I'm glad. Good for you. Mm. But you don't got to fucking tell me how shitty I am or yeah. how, how <laughs> shitty my team is. Yeah. I know my team's shitty, all right? This being an Angels fan is the inverse of being a or what was the inverse of being a Patriots fan for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why I don't really have that big of like I or maybe that's why I understand because I yes, I at least had a team that was fucking good. Mm -hmm. And if you're a Southern California sports fan and you didn't like basketball, all your teams were dog shit for the last 20 fucking years. Basically, so I understand finally having something that you can latch on to and just be like, yes, I have been a fan of this. Finally, when Lord, when our do like is yeah. here. It's here. It's now good. I think every sports fan deserves that at some point in their life that their team that they're die hard about is good. 
but you ain't got to fucking take it that seriously. All right. Yeah. Cause like realistically, none of this affects you personally. No, it doesn't. These guys are making heaps millions. of money. Yeah. Millions. The, the millions of dollars that these guys are making. It's the bottom one. Bottom right. For that money, money. Yeah, yeah. For that money, money. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. I mean, if you know, if you know wrestling, time. if you know wrestling, you know crime time. Uh, so for the for future reference, that's crime time. Uh, the Vince McMahon segment, the the name that cannot be mentioned, the devil, <laughs> the, the devil, devil himself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was him talking, or rather, them talking to Vince McMahon, and of course. Or infamous money money yeah 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 so okay just league minimum is seven hundred and forty thousand dollars a year yes okay that's league minimum so yeah. every person on that team is making money, money. yeah yeah i got money money yeah yeah <laughs> is making at least that amount of money okay so most people who are fans of professional sports teams if you average they probably make like 60 grand a year. All right. That's not even one seventh of what these guys are making. So they don't give a fuck. They're just playing. They're just getting paid to play baseball. The game that they love yeah. since childhood. And now they're getting paid. So they don't care that much about their team winning. Mike Trout's a prime example of that. Yeah. I don't think he gives two shits about whether or not the Angels win or not, because he, he's getting paid. He doesn't right. give a fuck. Let me, let, let me ask you a hy- hypothetical question. All right, question. let me hear this hypothetical question. All right, let's say you end up in the World Series. The Angels. And you lose. You're talking about the Angels or me as a person? You as a person okay. go to All the right. World Series. Yeah. Uh, let's say you played for the Angels. <clears throat> okay. And you make X amount of money yeah. so that you live comfortably for the rest of your life. Yeah. Do you give a fuck if you win the World Series? Or do, do you say at the end of the day, ah, eh, fuck it, I made $300 million <laughs> All right, here, let me, let me, I'll just use the Mike Trout as the example. If I'm Mike Trout, I give no fucks about baseball or not baseball. I give no fucks about the World Series because I've never been there. Mm-hmm. Right. And I've made probably 20 million dollars a year for most of my career. Okay. So I don't give a shit about the World Series now at this point mm-hmm. in the later years of my career. However, if during some time. As when I were to be in the World Series in the midst of that, if I were to make it there and lose, I would need to fucking win a World Series. I don't even think Mike Trout has played in a playoff game, to be perfectly honest with you. I think they did maybe in 2014. Yeah, but I think he was injured. I don't think he actually played. Oh, he didn't didn't play? I'll have to look that up. Okay, okay. uh, Because, again, we want to spread facts. Yeah, yeah. But that would be a great fucking stat if he's never actually played in a fucking uh, just playoff a playoffs. And, yeah. Um, Shit. The closest thing he's gotten to that was the World Baseball Classic when it was the yeah. U.S. versus Japan. That was a pretty epic scenario, dude. That I mean, not to go off on a tangent, but on the subject of Otani and Trout playing against each other in the World Baseball Classic, man, that was like to me the pinnacle of baseball. International teams playing against each other, world's best. Uh, I mean, I think I think the ratings for that were were pretty exceptional, if I remember. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I'm actually hoping that baseball kind of reclaims its throne. I mean, I don't know if it'll ever reach what the NFL is as far as ratings or television views go. But maybe it could move into like the number two spot over like the NBA or something. I don't know, man. I think it's a it's a exciting time for baseball, and they're trying to clean up the game so it's it speeds up a yeah, little bit honestly, more. Honestly, I kind of think that was better. I think that yeah, the pitch clock. Listen, we're all agents of hating change, right? Is this just how yeah. we are? We're, we have that. That's the thing we have from the boomers is is not liking change. Yeah, and I was against it at first, but once it was implemented, and I it, it does speed the game. It makes the game a lot more fucking interesting, and it makes it a lot more fast paced. Yeah, I think it's fucking necessary. Yeah. Um, Okay. So I was technically wrong. Mike Trout has played in three playoff games. What was it against Boston? Those were the three games that they played in when in against yeah against Boston or whatever that. What was it? Twenty fourteen. Yeah, that the three they went three and out. (laughs) Get the fuck out. Um, of that fucking five game series, and he was, goddamn, his batting average one eighty nine. Oh no, it's much worse than that. 0.83, 0.083. He was 
fucking 83. <laughs> his batting average was 83. <laughs> he went one for 12. Ooh, that's that's painful. But Boston at that time, I mean, they ended up oh, winning the World yeah, Series. Yeah, they won the World Series. So, like, yeah. Pff, I, yeah, okay, of course. Sure. But that still sucks. And listen, if it's me, I can't, I can't fucking settle with that. Fuck, man. Three playoff games and my playoff ERA, or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, batting, average? batting average is, is 83. <laughs> it's not even in the triple fucking digits. It's not even a one. It's you need even, to yeah. at least make the playoffs to get that above 100. Yeah. I, I would be like, if I was, and, and no, granted, Mike Trout will probably be maybe second ballot Hall of Fame okay. just because of the ambassadorship that he has had for baseball and the general good guy that he is. I'm sure he'll get in. He's, I'm sure he's, all the, I'm sure and everybody wise. loves him. What? And numbers wise. Yeah. Individual accomplishment numbers wise, yes. <laughs> the numbers don't lie. That's true. Individually, the numbers don't lie. And I almost don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it. I think Mike Trout is the exact definition and maybe even blueprint of what an individual player is capable of. An individual player, not a team player. An individual player. Okay. So maybe if you do the Tom Brady and you take a little less money, maybe they can build a team around you. I don't know. You know, Tom Brady was a goat, right? Or is the goat in football in terms of quarterbacking. I think Mike Trout had the potential to maybe be that for baseball, but I think he just was like, ah, we're never going to make it. I just want the money. Fuck it. Three, he, I'm gonna make as much money as I can, and I don't blame him for that either. Mike Bright or Bryce Harper, who was somebody that started off with the Phillies at like 17 and a mm. half or 18 years old, yeah, somebody that could give two shits about. Well, not that he wasn't competitive, but winning a World Series is not a priority for him, which is why he ended up going to yeah the Phillies. Which I don't know what his deal was, but it, it's some exorbitant amount of money, yeah. and it just happened to be that he got paid. And, and they put they, a team. They yeah. put a team together and, and nearly won the World Series, but that wasn't actually the case. But uh, shit, man, that's probably the route that I would go. Realistically, I mean, just get as much money as you can. Just, you, just rake in as much money as you can, because you can't do this forever. You can't do it forever, <clears throat> and you might as well get the money while it's fucking good, dude. Being in, in well, maybe baseball. It's kind of like being in the military. Like mm. your career is going to go probably twenty years. If you're going to retire, mm. you're going to go twenty. You want to do your twenty. But then with baseball, that's it. Once you're done, you're done. Mm -hmm. So you want to try to make as much money as you can. And then also, you know, have fucking side deals and, you know, maybe set yourself up for broadcasting later on or something to do. Like Trout will probably be some fucking figure in the organization after he retires. Yeah. Just because of the, I'm sure the goodwill that, that he's brought. And it's also a good PR move on the organization's part. Look at this guy who's played for us. For 25 fucking years. And oh man. When he retired. We even we brought him on as a whatever. I don't know. Fucking batting coach or some stupid shit. And then oh eventually we, we worked his way up to the front office. Or who knows. So. I do think that's disgusting. That stat of three playoff games in your entire fucking career. And an 83 batting average. I could not let that stand personally. If that was me. I'd be like. I'd be in that fucking locker room every day. Just looking at everybody and going. Yeah, you, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> you suck dicks. You need to fucking do better. Yeah. You need to fucking get good because I can't carry this team alone. Player meeting. Oh, it would be every, it would be every fucking day. I'd be calling a player meeting. And listen, if I was in a position as the same as Mike Trout, as essentially being the team leader, I would just be like, oh no, this is happening. And you, I will, I would motivate you into either going to a different team so we can get somebody else in here, or you're just going to start doing better. Because we need to, I need to get back to the playoffs, bitch. I gotta have a fucking over a hundred at least ERA or a fucking I can't say ERA over a hundred batting, batting yeah, average. I need to have at least over. I need to at least have my batting average be in the triple digits. That's like the bare minimum. Mm. Fuck. All right. What do you? Okay. Yeah. So this, uh, I don't know if we're done with this whole hypothetical no, situation, maybe, but good. Are we? I don't know. We can keep going if you got more. No, I was gonna oh, say I'll, I'll right. take the money easily. Yeah, take the money. World, right. world Series over World Series. Take the money. I don't give a fuck. 
Yeah, and then like I said, just to recap mine, if I never make it to the World Series, then I'm taking the money. But the second I make it to a World Series and lose, I that my sole purpose will be I need to win one of these. Okay, I think the ideal scenario is for the front half of your career, at the point in which you enter your twilight years, you restructure you restructure your if you are that much if you're that baller of a player on the team that you're the team leader and you just you're the shit. I think you you do go the Tom Brady route towards the end, yeah, and take maybe five million dollars or whatever, so that the rest of the money can be allotted for better yeah. players. Yeah, and then uh, once you get enough rings, you just say, "Ah, fuck it, I just want to get paid now." <laughs> yeah, and then you win another ring, and then fucking by you know by accident, and then you know, fuck it. Yeah. Uh. So in terms of spring training for the Angels. Uh, I don't know what the fuck is going on with their dugout. I think <laughs> I think Ron Washington is trying to create an environment for all the invitees and all the prospects to be on the Angels team to see how the game is played. Uh, I mean, because not everybody's gonna make it. The the I believe the oh, twenty five yeah. man roster, right? But it it I don't know if it's comical. But it, it it does feel that way because this is these are grown men <laughs> like yeah that you're it, it's like the equivalent of taking a little league team to go watch how baseball is played at the professional or even like the college level to go yeah. out to the game so you're doing this with grown men they're yeah. all there and like not all of them so like I don't know that what do you think about that well I think that it's it feels like team building what yeah, yeah that's of course that's what it is because this. The Angels don't have that. Nobody has any sort of team fucking camaraderie. That's why they can't put shit together and win because nobody cares. Everybody just wants to get paid. Yeah. So I think that you you got to I think what he's doing is admirable and I think it's the right thing to do. I just don't think it's going to work. I just, I, just, <laughs> I just don't think there's anything that's going to make them win other than getting rid of everyone and starting over from scratch. Mm-hmm. I think that's what you need to do yeah. at this point. Um, But I, I mean, listen, I, he invited everyone to the dugout. I mean, I even got an invite to go to the dugout. I couldn't make it because I couldn't get it to Arizona. But, you know, I, I mean, fuck, he was inviting everybody left and right. Fucking anyone that wanted to come in. Oh, hey, man, did you used to play baseball fucking in Little League? Oh, yeah, come on in. Let's fucking get this going. <laughs> and we're going to build us a team here. And shit. Hey, maybe that's what you do. Maybe maybe you just say fuck it. Maybe that's the thing the Angels need to do is they just need to hold an open tryout and just get rid of everybody and then just play pay the entire team league minimum for guys that have never played professional baseball before and just see what happens. Maybe that's what you do. Just take a bunch of undrafted guys that are hungry and fucking make it work. But I don't think that it's, like I said, a bad thing. It's probably futile, but when you are brought in to coach a team that's had as dismal of a record. This is um this is almost kind of like Major League here. Like this is this is the 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 old the Cleveland Indians of old now. The Angels have become the laughing stock of the of the league essentially. And they're just bringing in some coach to try to maybe I don't think I don't think Ron Washington is the guy who's going to get them somewhere. He is just a transitional coach. I don't think he has many years left coaching in general. I think this might be his last stop when he's done if you if you just in my opinion but if he could turn crap into gold yeah then he stays oh yeah he stays or at least if he could turn crap into bronze (laughs) hey man he that what a way to end your career oh yeah i took this team that fucking hadn't made the playoffs in fucking 10 years Mm -hmm. and we made the playoffs yeah which would be a a very hard feat when when, when you have uh, the Houston Astros and the Seattle Mariners in your division who are both stellar teams in the AL West. Uh, one additional problem that poses the Angels is also Anthony Rendon being straight cancer to the team. Basically, because yeah. he prioritized because <laughs> they're asked of like, uh, I think they were asking him about like, you know, spring training and stuff. He's like, man, I'm going to put God in my family first. I, baseball is secondary more or less like saying he's tuning out like he just yeah, doesn't give a he shit doesn't give a shit yeah and that's fu- that's what honestly man i get it the organization's paying that guy but if you're if you're the coach you show up for all 160 well let's say you play half let's say you play 82 games or 100 games in your, yeah in the season 
You show up for all of them because you're being paid fucking whatever amount of money that he's getting paid. And listen, man. You take it in the ass and you say, yes, sir, may I have another? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and and you also fucking, <clears throat> as the coach, I think I think you, you just fucking tell that guy, hey, man, <clears throat> you're just going to sit the bench this year if you want to have this fucking attitude. Oh, man, that'd be fucking great. If Actually, no, that would be a fucking vacation for him. Yeah, but think about this. You're not getting the reps. You're not getting all the fuck. Oh, you're gonna, you're you're hurt, gonna you're, suffer. Yeah, I'm telling you that right now. Mm. You, your performance when you return will suffer. Yeah, if you don't get to play, if you sat out, if one, if one of those guys sat the entire fucking season, mm. I guarantee you, when he goes on the next team after he bails or they trade him or do whatever, mm. and he starts, he's gonna be off to a rough fucking beginning. Yeah, because you just you just sat for a fucking year. <sighs> No bueno. They need to have a full metal jacket moment with him. He'll be sleeping on the road. Oh, and they just and beat the, the shit out of him. They come out with a sock party and beat his ass. Like, <laughs> it yeah, was all man. a dream, fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That'd be great. Um, so on the Dodgers side. Yeah, yeah. As, uh, before we got detracted. Oh, so yeah, true. Anyways, Shohei Otani struck out his first at bat, second at bat. Hit a dinger, two run, two run dinger, and then the following day, Yoshinobu appeared for his first appearance. Three Ks, I think one hit. Uh, no, good. no, no earned runs. But one problem that he had was from second base. You could see what his pitches were. Oh, so you could. I mean, if I don't, I don't know that that's something that the team is gonna look into. And say, hey, buddy, like you need to fucking have your glove covering up yeah. your, your pitches. So um otherwise, I mean, dude, the guy was throwing gas. I mean, I I didn't get to see everything, but he has a 12 to 6 curveball. It's pretty fucking nasty, at least from what I've seen from the WDC yeah. <clears throat> and some of the other shit. But um I don't know, man. Pretty, pretty exciting time. And since we're still technically on the Nippon sports report, uh don't have any news for Shota Ibanaga, but I hope they let that dude talk on his own because uh, some people are saying that he's the greatest Cubs of all, one of the gr- greatest Cubs players of all time. He, he hasn't did, even played yet. Yeah, he hasn't even played that. Need to raise the statue. Uh, so uh, what, what else you got for sports? You got anything else, Dad? Uh, yeah, for sports in general. Wait, hold on a second. I had the count. Like I had the thing up. Hold on. I put some things in there, I think. Did I? Uh, the trolling. Oh, I had uh, that. That's one of the things I was looking at. The was, trolling. Yeah, the trolling. Uh, so I did a little bit of trolling just to be funny, like for what specifically? Uh, the angel. I specifically trolled the angels. Like I was just fucking around, and it, I don't know if it was really trolling. I was just fucking being ridiculous. You should There's, just put the suicide hotline for as a comment for every angels post. <laughs> like, are you an angels fan? Here you go. One eight hundred. Whatever it yeah, is. <laughs> suicide prevention. If you're having thoughts, or, or no, just not even that. Just say, "Are you an Angels fan?" Call this number. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I was. Uh, wait a minute. Where was I going with this? Oh, the yeah. trolling, trolling. I, uh, I fucking said there was a guy that they, they, the Angels tweeted this picture about some guy that's at the spring training and he had gone into the back area of the field. In, I think it was over like center field. And there's this <laughs> little like cliff thing or whatever. And he put these, these cardboard letters trout up there. Like, the, like, there. A, like a recreation, uh, a recreation of, of the like the Hollywood, Hollywood sign. sign. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it was funny. I mean, I think this guy was doing it seriously, not as a joke. Yeah. And so the angels had said something to the effect of, oh, man, look at this guy. Like, oh, wow, what a nice guy. He's doing this. And then instead of Trout actually commenting on it himself, they they the, the angels reposted or retweeted their own tweet and then tagged Mike Trout in and said, oh, yeah, we asked him and it's Mike Trout approved. And I'm like, man, he couldn't even fucking. So I said, hey, at angels at Mike Trout. Somebody should really get this guy some season tickets. Mm -hmm. I mean, he braved the fucking daring angles of this cliff and he, and he brought these deceptively heavy cardboard letters all the way up there. And I had basically just said like, man, this guy, he is a true hero. Bravo, sir. Bravo. 
And then I put like hashtag hero, hashtag fucking like super fan and like some other shit. <laughs> yeah. And then I just I just thought it was funny. That one got like a lot of views and like a couple of likes. Nobody shit it on. Nobody shat on it, though, which is I'm trying to evoke that response, which I think the hot the suicide hotline number will definitely <laughs> will definitely piss some people off. Yeah. So even though, you know, it's, it's OK. It's like uh, it's like the equivalent of. If you say a, a like some kind of slur and you are whatever that is, you're allowed to do it. Well, like I'm an Angels fan, so I'm allowed to say that, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, you know. So um, there was that, and then there was another fucking story that I had just seen. Um, pro, wait, what was it? Sport? Did I say sports news today? Okay, it was on ESPN. They had all these like fucking things, and I don't know why I clicked off of it, but oh man. Well, in the meantime. Oh, whack. Well, it was it was a bunch of stories lined up into one, but it was like the top headlines. But mm. now, oh, well, yeah, Shohei Otani got married. And what did you say? He had that picture of the dog or something? Yeah, shit on the fucking corner. Yeah. Like, uh, so, I mean, there was a lot of comments of women saying, oh, I just fell to my knees at Trader Joe's. Like, because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they find him handsome or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, consider it over, ladies. The, your, your shot at Shohei Otani's absolute fucking zero at this point oh yeah that, this was the one that i fucking thought was the best all right it was the kansas city chiefs super fan uh known as chief saholic today is has, he white uh i honestly don't know because the only pictures i see of him are wearing like garbs what i would like to what i don't want to refer to as a furry suit but he's wearing like all these furry suits but in kansas city chiefs you know colors okay different yeah. animals right um so he, he uh today pleaded guilty to federal bank robbery and other charges oh, admitting shit. to a violent string of robberies at banks and credit unions in seven states and then laundering the stolen money through casinos wow and this guy's like famous on all the social medias as like the super like the chief's super fan or whatever yeah and i just thought oh he dresses up as a wolf that's what it is okay i just i thought that's the most hilarious thing i've ever fucking seen this dude was out robbing banks and then laundering the stolen money at casinos by gambling and then just cashing out to get to launder the money but yet he was attending and and he was a small level local celebrity for the fucking Kansas City Chiefs, man. It's like Marlins, man, dude. Yeah, it's, it's just like it's so funny. And then obviously he was just like, man, I'm just going to rob some banks. Yeah. <clears throat> Which, OK, so let's say you were in a position to be an influencer where you are the unofficial mascot of a team. You got paid. Oh, a million the- dollars oh. to go to every home game and make a jackass out of yourself. I'd do it for like 200 grand. <laughs> a million dollars? I'd do it for 100 Gs. No, listen, oh, I wouldn't do it for 100 Gs. I'd, I'd do it for, I think, 200. Because after taxes, then I'm basically taking home enough money to where I don't have to really work another job. Yeah. And then I could literally spend full time in the off season and when they're not at home doing something related like podcasting or some bullshit. Right. So yeah, absolutely. I'm fucking, I'd do it for, yeah, like 200 grand, a million. (laughs) No questions asked. What do you want? Shit. If they wanted me to, you know, fucking, I don't know, uh, do some sort of fucking ridiculous shit on the field in front of the, the whole fucking crowd. Oh, I'd do it every fucking day. Every, every home game. I'd do something ridiculous. I would definitely, I'd dress up as a rally monkey or whatever. That's what you have to be, right? If you're an angel, it's an angel. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be exclusive. Oh, just any team, whatever team. Yeah, whatever oh, team. Right. Like, because if you were just, what if it wasn't? You became a figure. Yeah. What if it wasn't a local team? What if it was just a team in another area, and they said, "Hey, hey, Adam, we really would like you to come on and, you know, be our unofficial mascot, and you got to support the team, and you got to other you know, stadiums. Yeah, no, like, like it's, let's say the Detroit Tigers. Okay, called you up and said, hey. Hey, Adam, we see what you've been doing, and we would really like to get you to be our fan, unofficial like mascot, even though you're really not a fan of the team. But we like the stuff you're doing, so we'd like you to take that stuff 
and we'd like you to come over here. You come to every home game. We'll pay you, you know, league minimum seven hundred forty thousand dollars, and you just basically come here every home game. But you have to wear all the gear. You got to wear all the shit. You will have. You're, you're going to be part of the show. You're going to be out there shooting t-shirt guns. You're going to be out there. For, you're like working for the organization, but you get to go to every home game of this team that you're not really a fan of. Would you do that? Mm, if there was a potential alternative, I would do it for $200,000 mm-hmm. for the Dodgers. Okay. But I don't know about. Don't you know wouldn't about do it for. Okay. Let's just up it to a million. Would you do it for a million dollars for another I'd highly team? consider it. Yeah. <laughs> For, but then like you have to be like everything you have to be about a fucking mark yeah like all your social media you have to fucking put them over all the time you cannot even admit to liking the dodgers oh that's painful like that's, at least not in public like you can silently that's like for the dodgers that's selling out in a way that oh, I, I, don't, I don't think i could do it i don't that think is, I could that do is it. the definition of no no hold on out it's not selling out Buying Buying in. <laughs> dude that's the clip we need yeah. to get money yeah, yeah i got money money yeah yeah that that is the clip we need to get the I'm not selling out or the, it's really we should have Triple H saying you're not selling out you're buying in yeah you see in this business yeah <laughs> in this business oh we got to get that one too that's a good one fuck yeah. man um I don't know I don't think I could do it I have some bit of integrity I suppose fifty million though if I got paid as much as like Otani all right or- what if they gave you a what if they gave you a ten year Hundred million dollar contract. That's ten million dollars a year. That's pretty good. I, I don't think I could say guaranteed. No to that. And let's say it's guaranteed. So even if you get injured mm-hmm. and you can't perform, you're still getting paid no matter what. Oh yeah, maybe I fall down the stairs, or maybe I have a boating accident. And, and then I do you it for just, one year. <laughs> <laughs> you have a permanent injury. Oh man. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. What, what about you? Would you do it? Oh, 100 percent for fucking that amount of money. Oh, no questions asked. I'd do it for. I'd go for a year and do it for a million dollars and fucking you know. I'd do it. Fuck that. I'd go. I'd go to fucking roll my ass to Detroit and fucking freeze to death in the in the winter time and fucking you know. Well, no, they only play there in the summer, but you know, whatever. I mean, shit. I'd do it. I'd do it for other sports too. Shit, man. And really, what I would do is I'd then parlay that into all major sporting events for that fucking city. So if it was, let's say the ti- let's say it was Detroit Tigers, right? Yeah. I'd go to the fucking Lions and it'd be like, hey, you know, football season's not during baseball season. So how about I come to every home game and do we run a deal similar to this? This and then I go to the Detroit Pistons, even though I don't even really follow basketball. I go there and I say, hey, you know, every home game during the football season and baseball season that is not on a, a home game of uh, of mine of these other sports, I will come and do this for you as well. What do you think about that? And then maybe parlay that into a, a full time gig, essentially year round. You're just you're just going to sports games. Fucking all home teams. And then fuck, maybe you even tell them, hey, man, for an extra, let's say we sweeten the pot and you give me an extra five million a year. I'll go to all the road games, too, and be an asshole in the in the in posting <laughs> stadiums. And I'd do it just to go to all the fucking uh, all the baseball stadiums. Oh, yeah, that is on my, that's a bucket list thing for me is if I ever got the opportunity to visit all 30 <laughs> stadiums. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm doing that. That's going to be my like, I, I don't want to just wait until I'm retired to do it. I'd like to start going, you know, maybe in a year or two when Chloe's old enough and then so that she can experience it because that'd be sweet as shit. Just get like an RV and just park it on the side of the house. And then when I'm ready to go during the summer, when they're off for school, every summer we go to two different fucking or three different stadiums Mm -hmm. in different States. And we just drive around and then we get to go see all the cool shit that's in the area. I'm glad I got Oakland out of the way. Cause, uh, well, I technically went to a Raiders game, but I've been to the Oakland Coliseum Mm -hmm. And I've gotten that that one out of the way because that that that's one you probably don't want to go to. No, yeah, <laughs> the prison stadium. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, I think they the speaking of the A's, I I do believe that the city of Oakland was guaranteed by Major League Baseball one of the next two expansion teams. They Since said that they said that they said, hey, if you host the Oakland A's for another two years, we'll guarantee you. Because I guess the stadium they're building is not going to be ready until the 2027 season. For I the think, loss, for a lot for Vegas. For, for Vegas, yeah, for the 2027 or 2020. Well, this is 2024, right? Yes. It might be the 2026 season because they said they need to host them for another two seasons. Mm-hmm. So I think that's this one and 2025. It may be 2026. All right, then fuck, fucking give the A's. I mean, give the A's back to Oakland and then just have this new franchise be its own thing. I don't know if it works that way though. I think you got to like start a new team name. 
yeah, that's what they're going to do. They're going to give them a new expansion team. They're going to say, oh, gross. We're, we're, well, what if they just the Oakland Expos? Maybe. I mean, shit. Maybe. <laughs> or maybe you just make a, uh, make some bullshit team and then you just have the Montreal Expos come back. And now you've got you just bring that freight, that title back. The Montreal Expos. Man, that's such a good fucking. I just love. I mean, I never owned a hat from them. I just love the swirly yeah, man, M with the, M. the three <sighs> colors. So good, dude. It's legit because it looks like a J and a B. So yeah. like, it looks like a like a like a stylized J and a, and a stylized lowercase B, which those are my initials. So I I always loved fucking that hat, man. It was dope. Yeah, but yeah, so that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna give the a chance. No, it's not a chance. They're guaranteed. They guaranteed them. A franchise. A franchise will be in Oakland. The next one of the next expansion teams will be. They said the next one. So even if they do an odd number and they do, they don't have a second one ready yet. The Oakland will be getting another baseball team. I hope they change the the format from having three divisions to just having because if it's thirty two teams, they should do something like what the the NHL does. They have oh, like yeah. two different. It's just two conferences. It's, like two, it's two conferences and then two mega divisions. East it's like West. eight. It's yeah. like eight. eight and eight. Yeah. yeah, that's what they should do. Yeah, I think that'd be cool because then it makes it super. It, it makes it makes conference or not conference, but division play more. I mean, you got to go through all those people to, well, yeah. to to make it to the playoffs. Well, and then for 162 fucking games, like yeah. then, then yeah, then then you're really fucking pushing the pushing the buttons on that shit. Yeah, and it makes it yeah, it makes it more interesting because then. Now, yeah, if you've got a shit, if you're a couple of shit teams in in the West, but there's there's no less shit teams in the Central. Well, now the division the, the divisions just got a lot more difficult because you just combined them. Mm. So I don't know. I think that may that would really test the teams. I think. Yeah. So, but I mean, that's assuming that we get 32 teams when it happens. Yeah, I mean, I would hope isn't there isn't that because they always want to make it like an even number, an right? even number, right? Yeah. So I would imagine they'd have to do at least two fucking two at a time i don't know where the second one's gonna be what what do you what do you got what do you got for uh let's say they have an expansion team what do you think for names for oakland oh it okay i, I was thinking okay for oakland <laughs> oakland feces the, the, the oakland street shitters i think that's the or no I, you know what i think the oakland transients is actually a fucking great name or the oakland hobos and then the guy the guy is oakland literally bindles. the bindle sticks <laughs> <laughs> the Oakland Hobo Sacks. Yeah, and, and that's the, that's the fucking logo. Instead of the two crossed bats, it's the two crossed fucking uh hobo the hose, bindle it, sticks. Yeah. yeah, that'd be fucking sweet as shit. Yeah, I was trying to think. I'm like, okay, because the athletics technically weren't their thing. It was back in Phil- yeah. Philadelphia. So if they do get a franchise, they should get something that's more fitting for their city or for their area. Yeah, and then are I don't know if they've confirmed or not if the Las Vegas team is going to just change their name. I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. I mean, I guess if the Las Vegas team had a new name, then you could give, let them keep the athletics, but fuck that. Just get a new name. That name sucks anyway. Yeah. Fucking the A's. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Doesn't even mean anything. Yeah. I mean, shit, dude, the other potential their mascots, sit- a fucking elephant. All right. I don't understand I don't get that. that either. I don't understand like, that. But then again, I mean, there's a lot of franchises that just have weird fucking math. I mean, what is the fanatic? What the fuck is a fanatic, dude? He's like well, an alien or some because, shit. Well, yeah, but that's because he's they're the Phillies. They're the Philadelphia Phillies. So it's like it's a play on the, the team. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The, a Philly is nothing. So you have to make some shit up. So that's why you made this weird the alien. One, yeah. yeah, he's the Philly fanatic. Like, yeah, that was a good use of that. Yeah. You well, know, so I mean, Nashville, I think, was one of the other consi- the considered cities. Nashville. I think Montreal. I honestly think Montreal should come back. I think it'd be cool to have. Well, listen. A, there's a reason why they left, and that was because no one was going no one was going. Game. Yeah, so I, get I don't it, know yeah. if their appetite for baseball baseball has returned, mm-hmm. but I think it's. I realistically think we might get to see some international teams get starting to get to play, and if they go to Mexico, mm. you put them in TJ, and you make them the Tijuana Golden Sombrero, <laughs> the Tijuana. Hold it. What, what does that mean again? Uh, that was uh, four strikeouts in one game. Four strikeouts. If in you're one a batter, game. if you're a hitter yeah. and you strike out four fucking times in one game, you have just earned yourself a golden sombrero. Nice. So uh, I think yeah. they should take it back. They should make that name uh, mean mean something positive. So do you want a golden the sombrero? TJ, the TJGS is the, t- the TJ 
Tijuana Golden Sombreros. And then you just be crazy. And you know how like that Black Rifle Coffee Company has the BRCC? You have TJGS. <laughs> and it's in a square. You make it simple and elegant and it fucking it will be dope as hell. All right. So, I mean, for, for the exercise of finding names, what, what would you give Nashville? Nashville? <clears throat> oh, man. I think you got to be like the Nashville fucking country musics. The Nashville. Oh, no, that's that doesn't really work. The Nashville fucking, you know what you do? You let celebrities sponsor a team, and then you have like the Nashville Kanye's mm-hmm. or the Nashville Yeezys. <laughs> like <laughs> that would be fucking interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, because I don't know what you could put. What do you put? The Nashville fucking hot wings. Like <laughs> yeah. What, <laughs> the Nashville Frank's Red Hots. Like yeah. I, you know what else is in fucking Nashville or Tennessee in general? um music okay so what what do you have well you got the jazz already so you can't really use that but what do you we like the the nashville notes and they're like a musical note you know uh, that's kind of dumb i mean that could be interesting though if it's like a little guy and you like you make him like the microsoft clippy but he's a musical note yeah and you make him just be an asshole and he goes around and fucks with people oh that'd be pretty funny yeah okay so on a tangent of like baseball affiliated things yeah uh so I think there's some there's some type of fucking adult baseball league, you know, oh, for guys yeah, that are yeah, washed yeah. washed up. <laughs> there's this team. Uh, it's so the league is called the Old North State League, and there's a team called the Dairy Daddies, and this the is Dairy Daddies. This is their fucking. Oh league. my god, that's fucking awesome! So man. I was thinking, I'm like, dude, I want to comment and say, like, do you guys have a? Do you guys have like a cream cannon for the the fans and maybe even sell cream pies? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but oh, that's dope. I just thought that was kind of a cool. Uh, what's that fucking? Uh, what's that triple A affiliate team or double A affiliate team that you got? Like the, the oh, the trash, trash pandas. Yeah. yeah, the Rocket City Trash Pandas. Yeah, where where's that at? Uh, they're in Alabama. In uh, fuck, I forget the name of the city, but it's 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 where like NASA shit is is based out of. Okay. So that's why they call it's called Rocket City because they're the Rocket City Trash Pandas. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. that's fucking hilarious. That's All a right. great name for What, what are we at in terms of time? Oh, hour and 26. Oh, we can go for four more minutes to get 90. 90 All right. Oh, will, you, will you be attending Angels games this season? Oh, absolutely. Oh, that was another thing that I trolled. Back to the trolling. I forgot. I said okay. I, I literally tweeted at the Angels and like a couple of angels fan pages and i said man you guys because they did some little thing where they showed all the uh, the giveaways and the specials and i said man guys i can't wait for buy one get 10 free this year (laughs) (laughs) that was the best tweet i think i've ever made because it was it was short and sweet and said so much with so little yeah (laughs) and i know i pissed off a shit ton of people by saying that and uh dude it's gonna make it's gonna make the game the games great it's gonna be affordable Oh yeah. You never have any trouble parking or oh, nothing. No. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be awesome. I, I can't I can't fucking wait honestly. Me and Katie are super excited about this year going now that all of the Shohei fucking hangers-ons are now going to be gone. They're not yeah. going to be showing up. It's going to be great cuz listen, we did go to a bunch of games the last few years, obviously, you know, not during COVID and shit, but you know, we we went to games and stuff and man, it is fucking packed. It's fucking crazy. I'm sure opening day, you're going to get the dickheads that are going to like the home. I was considering going to the home opener, but I'm like, you know what? Let me wait till about a month in when, when we're when the ticket fall, the ticket when price we're, fall uh, yeah. when we're like uh, nine and, and fucking 26. Yeah. Let me, <laughs> but then, then, then it will be much more. Fo- then I'll be able to buy secondhand season holder tickets mm-hmm. where they just want to maybe break even. Yeah. So, that ticket that, you know, on the season, you know, maybe they spent what? What are they getting a pretty good break? Let's say you got some outfield tickets and normally they sell them for fucking 25 bucks at the thing if you were to buy it. Okay, your season ticket price on that's probably like $12. So I could either get one for 12 or maybe they're just like, fuck, man, I got to sell some of these. Get it for six, get it for eight. You know, I've, I've seen that shit happen before. So this year is going to be the year of discounts for the Angels oh, yes. fans. And I am just... So excited for that just to get to go because I love Angel Stadium. It's a great stadium. It's a nice looking stadium. And, you know, whether we win or we lose, I can still get drunk and fucking have a good time. Have, so have a fucking have an Angels dog. Uh, Eat a double barrel glizzy. Oh, you yeah. Get two wieners in one bun, dude. Yeah, man. <laughs> two the double, wieners in a bun. Yeah. The double barrel glizzy. <laughs> 
Um, for myself, I already bought four tickets mm-hmm. for four different games. Oh yeah, I'm a fucking mark for all the players that just got it added on. I got the Shohei, both bobblehead nights. I got Yoshinobu's fucking bobblehead, and then I'm going for Japanese Heritage Night. Oh nice! I will bet you that next season mm-hmm. I'll be able to get season tickets to the Angels. For cheaper than what you paid for those four tickets. I'm combined. sure you will. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely think that's a yeah. possibility. Yeah. I, I, I don't disagree there. And I honestly, th- I think I'm going to do it. I yeah. think I'm going to get season tickets next year just to just to do it because I've never had season tickets before to anything. Mm. And I kind of wanted to get like Katie. We were, we were talking about getting uh, season tickets to the Kings or whatever. Yeah, I think that'd be um, cool. Yeah. But that, and that'd be sweet, too. But, um, you know, because I just like hockey, too. I mean, yeah, listen, I'm not necessarily I'm a Golden Knights fan, but like. I fucking just love watching fucking hockey and all. Yeah. Listen, uh, sure. I'll be a trader. I'll go fucking root for the Kings because I know we're going to whoop their ass anyway. So, yeah. you know, just when we're playing them, I'll just wear my golden Knights shit. But yeah, you know, on the other nights, eh, I'll just fucking wear the King shit and just pretend like I'm one of them. So that way I don't get stabbed or anything. Yeah. You okay. Know? I got one more topic. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Let's do it. All right. So there's been a bunch of shit about the fanatics jerseys. I know we talked about oh, it before. Man. Yeah. I bought shit from them. Their shit's fucking cheap ass. and it's yeah. the, the material. So, I think I sent you a text of, uh, or maybe it was a message of one of the Giants players <laughs> yeah, doing a photo op. You see his and ball he, sack? And <laughs> and you see and it, it, the material is so awful, dude. Like, it they, is, had, man. they took pictures of Shohei Otani, and you could see the tail end of the shirt yeah. through the fucking through the pants. pants. Yeah. That's not, that's not, you're not supposed to have that. And imagine dudes getting sweaty and their junk is, I mean, they're going to wear the cups, but still, yeah. Well, but still, you're just, it's still going to be sweaty and you're still going to be just like, you're, it's going to be see-through basically. Yeah. I'm surprised the Players Association hasn't fucking fought back and tried to say, hey man, these are no, these are a hard pass for us. Yeah. And I would just be curious to see who was in on the fucking meeting for this and, and, cause you know that they had to have guys basically doing poses of what we've been seeing. Mm-hmm. In testing them, and they were like, "Oh yeah, I would. I we, I can't wait until we can see ball sacks, dicks. Like you know, I, I I can't believe somebody was signed off on that." The best part is there was okay. So there was one player on the Dodgers. It, he's I don't want to say he's washed up, but he's he's all right. Uh-huh. He's all right. He's not the best. But Jason Hayward was like, I, I don't know what's wrong with these jerseys. They're, they seem all right to me. I'm like, of course they would get somebody on the lower end of the team uh, yeah. to mark out for the for the shitty because you know if you ask like say one of the better players well, on yeah, the Dodgers, they're not going to say Mookie Betts to fucking say he'd be like, ah, oh, he'd be no, like, man, these, these, these are garbage. These are garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're gonna try to get Shohei on board, he's gonna be like, you're paying me way too much money to say these pieces of shit are good. Yeah. So, so yeah. it was it was just it was just a. Uh, Turn, turn into a fiasco, dude. They, Nike should still be making their shit because I think that's what happened. They licensed. They licensed. The, yeah, Nike the still some, getting paid, but they just licensed it out to, to, to fanatics. Fanatics, and it's probably cheaper than Nike making it themselves. themselves. And I'm just like, dude, you should just kept fucking making it because now everybody's gonna be making fun of this like all fucking season. Well, dude. that's what they're doing. The NHL is doing that now. The the sweaters are gonna be made by fucking fanatics. Oh fuck, I need to. That's one thing for sure I need to do. I need to buy a Kings jersey that's made by Adidas. Yeah. Before they start changing. Yeah, I gotta, yeah. Yeah, I gotta buy a Golden Knights one too, because fucking that's the one jersey that I don't own that yeah. I need. So yeah, I need to get one before they turn into these shitty fanatics jerseys. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, if you're a if you're a fucking mark for fanatics or you're a, or you're an employee of fanatics, get your shit together, man. It is that is just the worst thing. And I get it. Everybody's trying to prioritize profit over, you know aesthetic but and sac- they're sacrificing quality man yeah but when it comes to sports stuff man we want good quality shit listen we're all marks we'll buy pretty much anything you put our logo on our, our fan our fandom logo on however there is a line and you guys are fucking stepping over it right now with this horse shit so fix your shit retool the dies or whatever you got to do and make these things a lot better you can do it i know you can so that's my rant, I guess. And I know this turned into basically a baseball episode, but you know, um, fuck whatever. Who cares? Uh, that's do, probably what you're going to be most. Do something getting. about it, bitch. <laughs> yeah. What are you do? Yeah. Why don't you fucking do you do? Why don't you do your own podcast and talk about sports and shit? You fucking lazy asshole. Yeah. Fucking pieces of shit. We need people calling in. Oh man. Yeah. We're, we're gonna get that eventually. Yeah. We will, once we get a couple people to listen, man. I haven't even put out the first episode yet. So. <laughs> All right. I got, well, I, 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 nobody knows this technically even exists at this point. Not yet, but I mean. Yeah, we need to get to a point where we just start taking this to other uh, local businesses. We can just do 
yeah. live shows and hear about people's stories with sports and yeah. if they've gotten fights with other people about dumb shit. I don't know, man. Maybe we could start a couple fights about dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? That's going to be when we go to a place and I see a, either a sea of blue, which is likely what's going to happen because everybody's going to be a Dodger fan now. Yeah. I will just go up there and just say the most heinous thing about the Dodgers that I possibly can and then just just start a riot. Yeah. Like that's how we're going to start off every fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> Starting with a riot. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess this is the end of the episode. So. Yeah, I guess so. And there's no outro music, so you're not going to hear anything because I haven't made it yet because <laughs> I'm a piece of shit and I'm lazy. So anyways. All right. Well, hey, guys, thanks for listening. And uh, if you enjoy uh, the musings of Josh and Adam talking about sports and shit, uh, follow along and listen to every fucking podcast that we do. And you can hear all those at GameRageMagazine.com. And if you would like to follow us and see some of our trolling that we do, you can follow me. Well, I, I'm just the main Game Rage account, but you can follow me. Oh, well, I guess I'm the one doing the trolling on there. So you can follow us at Game Rage Mag on Twitter and Game Rage Magazine on Instagram and TikTok. And you can follow Adam specifically if you want to see his trolling at All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram. No spaces, no bullshit. It's just All Gas No Trash Official. And it's also uh, only on Instagram because he doesn't believe in any other apps. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the wrap. So yeah. all right. Well, guys, thanks for listening. And uh, we will catch you on the next one.